is a very good Node boy. He loves Node. And he's here to tell us that Node is not dead, no matter what you think. I didn't even know Node was supposed to be dead. So I discovered a lie yesterday. <laughs> well, please, another round of applause, because you all made it weird. To Mateo. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. I don't know. Whatever. I'm going to talk about Node. A few things about me first. I am part of the Node.js Technica Steering Committee. I, um, I co-founded a startup a couple of years ago called Platformatic. Check us out, platformatic.dev, hello. Um, also created Pino, uh, Fastify, you're probably using them. If you're, if you're not using them, you're doing it wrong. So please stop using what you're using, start using our stuff. Um, I am a board member of the OpenJS Foundation. So I don't know, we can talk about the OpenJS Foundation a little bit later. Did work eight years and a half as a consultant and then decided to do, to, to do product, so wow, big change. Newsletter, whatever, YouTube, Twitch, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, important facts, last year I got 22 billion downloads on NPM, so right now somebody will pass through the each, each of the rows and ask for a little for one cent to collect for, for all those downloads that you have been doing. Um, so, let's talk about Node, though. And uh, there have been a couple of nice sentences from a few runtimes saying one will destroy Node in a few years, and another one that will replace the default uh, runtime from Node.js, to be from Node.js, to be from Node.js. So, so let, this talk is about to answer one question, one burning question that people are asking in, on Twitter or Reddit or whatever a few times. Is Node.js dead yet? Okay? This is a fun, this is a fun, fun question because, you know, all those um, reports of Node.js death is being probably exaggerated. I don't know. At least that's what Shakespeare will say. So no, Node.js is not dead. Okay, and let's give you a little bit of numbers because this is what it is. So, but before talking about Node, let's talk about a damn secret of technology. Okay, now, a technology that was born in 1959 is on the rise. A programming language, do you know what it is? COBOL. <laughs> Um, COBOL has just surpassed Ruby in the tube index. <laughs> and it's just under rust. <laughs> you know, this killed the audience, probably. <laughs> this is, I don't know, it's on the rise, okay? Uh, arrows are up, demand for COBOL is, is going up. So it's probably a good language to learn, you know? <laughs> it's, it has grown more than rust. So, uh, it's like, whatever, I'm just... Maybe there will be a COBOL JS at some point in the future, who knows. <laughs> so also, let's talk about jQuery. We just reached version 4. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> and it's used by 94% of the website in the world. Okay, and uh, how many of you use jQuery every day? Okay, 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 perfect. But it's used by 94% of the uh, jazz enabled website in the world. Um, so, what? Okay. Uh, well, let's talk about Node, okay? Like, again, what, what I was here to say is, uh, at some point, once you reach a certain scale of a framework, of a technology, it's very, very hard. It's not, nothing gets destroyed, okay? It's the, bi the biggest success you can do as a technology is to become so ubiquitous that everybody gives it for granted, okay? So, and let's talk about Node. So Node.js is turning 15, okay? So that's cool. You know, none, we're still a long way from 1959, but you know, it's, 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 it's getting there, okay? It's the most popular technology according to Stack Overflow. Even better than React at this point, I have no clue why. Um, and jQuery is there, by the way, so I'm very happy. It's uh, uh, the NPM registry has been growing constantly and linearly since forever. It's close to three million packages over there that you can use every day. Note that there was a little bit of a fluke here of uh, spamming that then was removed. <laughs> so there is this little whoop. Um, somebody had fun playing with the APIs. And uh, uh, it's close to three millions and all the other uh, ecosystems together are not reaching that scale. 
So what problem Node.js and NPM fix? So this is a fire alarm. So are we supposed to go out or not? Hello. I think this also happened last year. Okay. Oh, fire alarm test. Yeah. So they, yeah. So, but they didn't warn us this year. So that's nice. I have not been warned about this. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing we can do about it. We just have to like, yeah, just power it through. If you want to go to the bathroom, now is your time. Wait, does this run every day? Okay. Hopefully, yes. I hope it runs every day, okay? So. Okay, so uh, anyway, Node.js uh, solved the problem of reusing software at scale so much that uh, the Node modules folder became a black hole of all software in the universe. But everything, if it's, if it's not distributed on NPM, it almost does not exist at this point. And yeah, bundling them together were probably one of the best choices that the industry has made. Um, also, module usage actually grew, okay? I usually to track them, this by one of my modules. It's uh, one of the modules I maintain. I didn't author this. It's called readable-stream. You probably have multiple copies of it inside your node module folder. And you know, if you want to blame somebody, blame me, okay? And uh, these module grow like from more or less 3 million back in 2020 up to 7 billion downloads. In 7 billion downloads, this is the scale. Um, so basically in like three years, more than three times growth on, on the number of downloads in the ecosystem. It's, it's the, because this module is a good tracker of the growth of the ecosystem because it's almost on every single dependency chain of big frameworks at this point, so. Also, uh, I did some work last year in the number of downloads, sorry, just a second, I probably, um, um, is this the right one? Yeah, no, it's the right one, sorry. Sorry, it's giving me nuts. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't stay. Um, okay, so a little bit of OCD there, if you, if you, if you can plot. Okay, so um, I did a little bit of an exercise of plotting the number of downloads of, uh, of Node.js. You're probably not familiar with these numbers. So, um, uh, so Node.js overall, it's been uh, downloaded every month more or less 130 um, million times. Uh, but half of those are adders file. What are the adders file of Node.js and why they are important is a good tracker of usage. Well, uh, uh, adders files are the, is it, okay. Adders file are downloaded whenever you do an NPMI. Oh, okay, this is gone. It's back, it's gone, okay. Anyway, adders file are used by Node.js when you do an NPMI and it needs to build a native add-on. So you have a native add-on and you all, all of you have a native add-on, okay, somewhere, like can be SAS uh, or some other funky ones, okay. Um, you have a native add-on that you're using to do whatever. is one of the greatest success of Node.js, being able to in easily interact with C libraries, which means that you need a compiler, and you probably know that you need a compiler very often when you're doing Node. I don't know how many of you are doing this kind of stuff, but whenever you do that, you are, um, in order to build that native add-on, if it's not pre-built for you, you need the headers file. Because you need to bind against Node.js, and that's why half of the downloads are for headers file. So this is a good usage of, and this happens only once, okay? When you install a new version of Node, you, do, uh, you download the headers file on your system, and it gets cached forever. It's good use metric of the level of usage of Node.js itself. Looking at the binary downloads, this is actually fun numbers, okay? Uh, half of the downloads of Node are Linux, mostly because CI. Okay, so I'll, CI runs on Linux. So because CI runs on Linux, uh, half of the downloads are Linux. Very, very weirdly, and this is very interesting numbers, it's a lot of downloads are actually Windows. Okay, how many of you use Windows? Okay, 
but you're not representative of this scale of, of the down. Like, again, it's, there is a little bit of a demographic gap on, on our, uh, on, on, uh, between what the, the people that we interact with and the actual developer code base, the developer group in the world. Windows is actually super important as a platform. Um, so, as we said, 30 million of downloads global across our platform in, in, per month in 2021, and 250 in, in February 2024. It's a lot, okay? Uh, also because everybody, you're not, it's not that you're downloading a new version of Node every day on your machine, right? All of these are cached forever and nobody updates. We'll talk a little bit about, about later because you're not updating Node. Like, you are not. And if, uh, you know, it's, how many of you care when we release a new release of Node? Because you don't, probably. Yeah, you don't. Okay, somebody's updating, but you're not. And you're putting yourself at great risk. It's full of vulnerabilities if you don't update. So you should updating your Node, but you're not. Let's, let's look at the numbers. Okay, well, before all that, a uh, little reminder that the current only maintained version of Node are 18, 20, and 21. And I needn't include 21 because it's not LTS. But uh, so it's 18, 20, and 21. And a lot of people are still using 14, 16, and so on and so forth. And let's look at them. Um, so uh, for those downloads, more or less, like I don't think something like 30 million is uh, Node 16. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and then 14, and then 20, and 10. Wow. Yeah, pretty much. And um, uh, in fact, the important ones are 18, 16, and 20. Okay, which, uh, and you can see that 16 is finally going down. Like, how can we squash them to zeros? It's like half of the downloads of 18 are still 16. Makes no sense, okay? You're still using Node 16. How the, it's, it's full of vulnerabilities, folks. Update, okay? I, I don't know how your security officer at your company is actually allowing you to do that. You know, it's, it's um, I don't know, probably nobody's telling them, so. Uh, anyway, uh, Node.js 16 is, on, uh, is going down finally, but you can note that when Node.js 16 is going down, Node.js 20 is going up, okay? So the, the, the thing that's happened, and this peak down is December and January, so this vacation time, and 16, uh, so people typically update every two release. So they, once release is coming out, they, they just skip one. Updating, it's a lot of work, probably. I don't know why, but it seems to be a lot of work. And uh, people need, want to update it uh, to new releases. Skip one. So right now, people update from 16 to 20. Okay? So update from 16 to 20 is fine. Okay? 22 is going out the end of this month, by the way. Quick reminder that 22 is coming. Um, also, on top of all those downloads, the Node.js Docker images has been downloaded 800 million times in, 2024, in 2023. So, again, this is probably your production system that using Node, uh, all those downloads from Docker Hub. Thank you, Docker Hub, for hosting us for free. Okay? Um, let's look at the organization activity, because, you know, a good measure of, a project, uh, of the life of an open source project is how many contributions it has. We gained uh, 18,000 stars last year, crossing 100,000 stars at some point. Whatever, this seems bananas. Uh, number of pull requests in the last year went down a little bit. It's still 4,708 pull requests in a year. I don't know how many people have been working on this. Actually, I know. But it's a long, huge amount of people. And there was 21,000 reviews. Okay, how many reviews, can, okay, pull request review can in, any of you do in a day? Okay, imagine 21,000 in a year. Um, and a lot of issues. So if you want to be a triager and help squash them, please, we need, we need, we, we have a huge backlog. Um, commit and activity on Node.js core, it's uh, uh, kind of a lot, okay? Uh, in a few months, there was like, a th something like a thousand commits. Uh, it's, this is Okay, sorry, I just have no clue about these numbers. These numbers make no sense to some extent. And, uh, um, and it's actually a lot. Okay, there's a lot of activity going on all the single time in Node on making sure everything is, is good and healthy and updated. So, you know, seems about healthy. 
Uh, also, a lot of contribution on pull requests. So, pull request has been mostly stable in the, the number of pull requests has been mostly stable in the last few years. Pretty great uh, numbers, some hundreds of pull requests that needs to be reviewed. CI needs to run. Oh, I didn't mention this. This I could include a slide. We support 54 different combination of um, software and hardware, operating system and hardware. Also, some very obscure ones. So even some very old Raspberry Pi, and if you take the Raspberry Pi, there is a node binding a binary for it. Oops, it's fine, it works, okay? And um, so anyway, we do a lot of testing on all of those. We run all our test suites on all of those, and it passes on all of those. Otherwise, we're not cutting a release. So uh, our CI, Jenkins CI clusters is in the hundreds of machines, and you know, um, big hats off to Jenkins and to all the good souls that help maintaining it, because, yeah. Um, so, we work, Node.js projects work hard to keep all of you safe. You have Node.js on your computer, and we work hard to avoid security incidents and uh, security problems for you, but you need to update. <laughs> so, we received in 2023, 80 submissions for potential security issues, okay? Like, this is a massive number. Each one of those is like a P0 uh, priority stuff that somebody with very high skill needs to handle and vet. Most of them are actually not vulnerabilities, but uh, uh, a lot of people are trying to grab a CVE against Node. So, and the average response time is two hours. So, so there is always somebody on call to respond on the security issues on Node.js. So, this is amazing, okay? It was very high in 2020, in 2020, okay? Coming up from days down to two hours. Okay, this is good, good, good stats, okay? We'll talk about how that happened and why, okay? In 2020, I was doing that alone. Now that everybody's doing it, <laughs> essentially. Um, so, the time to triage is a different stat. So, first response is, hey, we have received you, we are going to take a look, okay? And then time to triage is somebody need to took, uh, took that vulnerability, download them on their computer in a more or less a sandbox-like environment, try to reproduce the bug. If they can reproduce the bug, the problem, then, oh, shit, this is a vulnerability. Got to fix it, okay. So, and that's when it gets triaged, okay? It's passing the triage block. And uh, a good chunk of this is possible because we received a massive grant from the, uh, from, uh, from the OpenSSF, the Open Source Security Foundation, in, through their Alpha Omega project. I don't know if you're familiar with this project. They were able to, uh, it was established in 2022 by um, uh, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon to fund open source and security in open source. Okay, and thanks to their support, huge support, um, we were able to improve that. We received 300K in 2022, and a little bit less in 2023, 270 something, and 300K again in 2024 to support security in Node.js. So, uh, it, it, this money is a drop in the ocean, so what Node.js needs, okay? Node.js is mostly powered by volunteers, but to guarantee a short-term uh, release cycle is actually fundamental to have it funded, okay? You know that Node.js release more or less a security release every quarter or sooner. So we have done one this week, we are doing one next week. Because disclosures of, co coordinated disclosures of vulnerability across the ecosystem are a fun thing to have. So when multiple runtime needs to fix the same bug, they need to put them all together on the same, need to, everybody needs to align on the same release timeline. So there is no zero days for the other runtimes. So we do one this week, one next week. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Node.js shipped last year, on the last few years, not last year, in the last few years. Because again, everybody thought that Node.js was dead, right? So first of all, we shipped ESM. I want to say a big hooray. <laughs> With all the problems that it happened, nobody thought we were able to do it. So we did, okay? With a lot of you know, discussions and um, bad blood, I would have to say a little bit, uh, we shipped a very crude version of ESM, which we are constantly improving. So it's happening and it's 
We are, we are actually eating what the community is saying. We ship threats, okay? People still put out blog posts, even this week, saying that Node.js is single-threaded. And really, please stop. Node.js is not single-threaded. You can actually have threads in Node, so please stop saying that, because it's not. Okay, take a look. Okay, stop copying, uh, copying that blog post from 2015 that everybody is still looking at. So please. And um, back uh, six years ago, I, had, uh, I, I did a presentation at the Node.js Collaborator Summit. We typically meet twice a year, talking about how to. I was done at a company called. I was at a company called Nearform at the time. And I did a nice presentation on how to sh uh, what were the groundwork that we needed to ship fetch in Node, and we actually did. Okay, and Node.js now has fetch. Okay, and I was you know and nobody believed it. Another thing that nobody believed that we'll have to ship it, we'll be able to ship it, and we did ship it. In fact, we have invested a lot of effort in web platform compatibility. We had fetch response request. Crypto, structure, clone, text encoder, and text decoder, blob, event target, file, a lot of more. We have promise specific API because everybody wants promise specific API, but also top level await to use them because otherwise they are pretty much useless. So, and then you end up in promise, in promise hell. So, and yeah. We started having node core only module, node colon module. Please use this syntax if you can. Mostly because Node.js don't want to be able to, to steal namespace from the registry and don't want to preempt anybody from using those. So we have node colon uh, uh, modules for us. We shipped watch mode because all of you use Nodeman. So we thought that this should be on core. So. And we have something called async local storage to power your React server components. Without a sync local storage, the, the React server component goodness that you ship that you're using in Next will not be possible. So this was actually good because this the work for this started huge time ago, and we were able to actually ship it uh, not so long ago. So this is actually a pretty good story. We have web crypto, and look at how odd it is to use promises with require. Like it's, it's, it's not nice. Um, uh, we shipped something called parse args because everybody was installing yargs and minimist and commander and things, and we shipped a way to do the um, to parsing the command line options. We did single executable applications, which is actually pretty good. It's still ex very much experimental. Was initially developed by Postman uh, Postman Labs, but it's super great. You can use it to. Uh, pack to bundle your application into a single executable. Probably 100 megs executable, but yeah, you can. And it's actually great because you can actually now ship your binaries like that. We have started working on a permission system, which is really phenomenal. No, as again, this is another thing that everybody said Node will never do it. And Node.js is an experimental permission system that is still being worked on in the sense of we receive a lot of CVs about it and we fix them. This is how it's being worked on. And uh, you can actually check and it will block you. You can actually relinquish some of your permissions and, uh, and uh, close up your application if you want it to. We ship node colon test, which is probably one of the, my best feature ever. So I don't know how many of you use it, but you should be using this. It's amazing. You can just you know, use it like you would use Mocha or Jest or any of those things, but way faster, and it's built in. So finally, Node.js is a test framework. And it is also a nice output, so hey, you can check it, run it, whatever, take a look. And like, a question for you, are you using any of the new Node.js feature, or you're still stuck in 2015? <laughs> Um, so let's take a look at what's coming. So first of all, we are doing require ESM. <laughs> Thanks to Joey, uh, is there this landed and it will be part of Node 22 coming out at the end of the month. You can turn on a flag, and require, e requiring an ESM module is shipping. Okay, um, 
with caveats, okay, top level await will not work, loaders will be problematic, bug will be needed to be fixed. Check it out, okay? But it's happening, so hopefully this will simplify the migration even further, okay? It's a, it's a long blog post explaining the why we are shipping this now and not before, and please check it out. It's a long, long, long blog post. There's a lot of technical details on why this was not super easy to ship before, before and we are shipping it now. This has been in the works for probably since the beginning of the, uh, of the node modules team when this started, but it actually took a long, long time to ship. So it's there, and take, take a look. Um, yeah, please take my money. I, I am bored to death about the ESM problems. So, um, also, we are actually shipping another flag to not have to do a .mjs anymore, and we can actually self-detect the things. And again, as I said, we have been listening to the community and the problem that they have been saying, and we are actually shipping it. Uh, Geoffrey, Geoffrey Booth did, did this. It's actually quite an interesting take on the problem, okay? And uh, it's a very good solution that involves uh, scanning files, pre-parsing. It's actually without a slowdown. So it's pretty magic. Uh, again, not possible without the latest uh, improvements on the platform. We are shipping WebSocket. Okay, in 2022, WebSocket is in. Okay, so, and not, it's spec compliant WebSocket. Okay, it's not a uh, node cook thing is actually the same thing that you will get in the browser. It's a really bad spec. I'm sorry, I'm, we are shipping this, but all of you wanted it. So here you have it. Um, but Node.js is not always uh, so relaxing. Like in this talk, you, we actually need you. We need more people to work on the thing. Node.js is just built on volunteers, okay? There is no one or almost no one is paid to do the work. And the OpenJS Foundation do not employ anyone directly to work on Node, okay? So because the foundation is not doing that, we need you, we need people to start helping out and working. There is space for everybody. We shipped a new whole new website, okay? And a lot of your front-end developers that could, have, could help on the website, okay? We are going to ship a whole new way of rendering our docs sooner rather than later. All those automation, you will be, it's, it's so old that you can say, oh my goodness, this is so bad. Um, let's chat a little bit about the project governance, okay? Because a lot of people say, oh, Node.js should do this, should do that. Node.js is built by volunteers and is part of the OpenJS Foundation, which has radical transparency uh, uh, as one of its key principles. So all our meetings are on YouTube. Okay, if you want to know how the Node.js of the, of the Node process makes his decision, you can just look at YouTube. And uh, in fact, Node.js project is run by their collaborators, okay? So when somebody opens a pull request on Node to make a change, the, co uh, the collaborators review it. And if it has two approvals and no objections, it can land. If seven days pass, only one approval is needed. Why is that? Because very, in a few areas of Node, only two people have the skills to do the work. And because of that, one does the work and the other one reviews. So that's why. <laughs> so we need definitely need more volunteers on certain subsystems. And um, if there is an objection, let's imagine that somebody wants to do a, a feature to Node and uh, somebody else wants to they say, no, we should not do that. Or we should do it in a different way. Then it's up to the Node.js Technical Steering Committee to decide what to do. So the Node.js TSC is there only to intervene when something needs to, uh, when there is contention in the project. So the Node.js TSC does not tell any one of the developers of the maintainers what they should be doing. The only thing it tells, well, they, they resolve conflicts, okay? It, However, something that we do is we uh, set the release date. So, twice a year, and uh, we maintain the list of collaborators. So if people want to become collaborators, this is part of one of the TSC responsibilities. So, pretty good stuff. And a good thing about the Node.js TSC that a lot of companies do not necessarily like a lot 
is that the Node.js DSC cannot be run by one company. One company can only have one-fourth of the seat. And those people are essentially tap on the shoulder based on, is a personal seat. It's not based on their company affiliation. But anyway, no one can hold more than one-fourth of the TSC, which means uh, that no one can control it. And uh, this is, breaks a lot of people's heart. And, and uh, if they, uh, and essentially, it's everybody's project, OK? So why somebody wants to destroy everybody's project? I have no idea, OK? Um, one thing very important is if you, it, given it's a collaborative project with a lot of people from all across the globe, you, people need to compromise a lot, okay? Because I want something, I need something done, somebody else might have different ideas. So a compromise will need to be made, okay? It's a, it's a big society to some extent, 100 plus development maintainers working on it. So you need to collaborate to each other. So from time to time, this means compromise needs to be made. Well, if you want to have a say, or anybody wants to have a say in the future of Node, you just need to start contributing, OK? How do you start? Well, you start saying, if you have a bug, OK, instead of reporting a bug and pretending that this bug needs to be fixed, you might, you know, send a pull request, OK? <laughs> you might, okay? Or if you want to say, oh, I want this nice feature implemented, you might want to send that pull request. How can you, you know, it's maybe try, okay? You will find that most, a lot of Node.js is written in JavaScript, so you will be able to actually do it, okay? You don't need to learn C++. Even though if you, like, if you, have C++, if you learn C++, you will have a lot of fun in the Node.js code base. Um, so, uh, thank you very much for watching this. I am Matteo Collina. I work for a company called Platformatic. So, if you have any question about how you know, run Node.js in the enterprise or whatever, I'm here. You can reach me out all day. I have a nice t shirt with written platformatic.dev. So, thank you very much. Woo!